हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू उत्तर प्रदेश राष्ट्र इंडियन ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी ऑनलाइन क्लासेस टुडे इन द एरिया ऑफ रिसर्च मेटोलॉजी वी आर एक्सप्लोरिंग अ न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज रिसर्च डिज़ाइन एज यू ऑल नो रिसर्च डिज़ाइन इज द स्केल्टन और द स्ट्रक्चर ऑन विच होल रिसर्च डिपेंड्स अ गुड रिसर्च डिज़ाइन ऑलवेज लीड्स टू अ प्रॉपर एंड एन एक्स्ट्रा ऑर्डनरी रिसर्च रिसर्च डिज़ाइन इज a platform on which all the structure of the research is going to lie let's see what is research design a research design is the program that guides the investigator in the process of collecting analyzing and interpreting observations means here by the help of research design our investigator used to analyze and collect and interpret observations and data it provides a systematic plan of procedures for the researcher to follow means it is a systematic process by which a researcher used to do and conduct his research work now there are some ten concepts highlights of a research design what is the research design and why it is being used the first thing is the nature of the study that what type of study you are going to conduct whether it is an exploratory study descriptive study analytical study scientific study whatever study you are going to do the nature of the study must be known by the investigator or a researcher the purpose of the study why you are doing this research what is the research gap what makes you to take this topic for the research the location where the study would be conducted means the area of the study where you are going to conduct the study what is the sample size you are going to take what are the boundaries in which your study is going to be conducted the nature of the data required means whether the study will be based on a secondary data or the study will be based on the primary data some studies are based on primary data some studies are based on secondary data while some of the researcher or investigator used to collect primary data and this data has been checked by the secondary data from where the required data can be collected now from where the data has been collected in the second topic in the second point you have said that the purpose of the study is clear and in the third you have said the location where the study would be conducted means the data will be conducted the data will be collected from the area of our study only what time period the study would cover means what are the time period whether it will be of past data whether it will be of present time whether it will be seeing the future and predicting the future what is the time area whether the study will be of 5 years period whether the study is of 2 year period what is the time period you are taking for the study the type of sample design that would be used now the sample design what type of it will be used how you are going to collect the data and how you are going to implementing the data and the statistical tools you are going to apply for the interpretation of the data the techniques of data collection that would be used whether it will be questionnaire whether it will be interview whether it will be schedule what are the techniques you are going to adopt for the collection of the data that is also very important for the research design the methods of data analysis that would be adopted means what are the methods you are going to adopt for the study for the research design if you are taking a primary data the primary data must be collected in a manner in which the statistical tools will be applied if your statistical tool required a data in normal scale you have to go with the normal scale if it is required data of the ordinal scale you have to go with ordinal scale so there are different types of skills which is being given in the research methodology and according to your statistical tool you have to apply and frame your questionnaire schedule or interviews and according to that you have to apply for the research and the last one the manner in which the report would be prepared means how you are going to present your report that is very important or a good investigator or a researcher the report presentation is very important because this is the ultimate and final outcome of any of the research the more simple way you are able to present your research the more better it will be for the society as a whole now let's see the classification of research design 
how you are classifying your research design. There are different methods of research design. The first one is experimental, historical, or inferential design. Whenever you are conducting a scientific study, means the study which is being done or which is being conducted in a closed atmosphere, we say it is an experimental study. Historical study, whenever we are going to relate a study or whenever we are going to conduct a study on the past data or the previous data, we say it is an historical study. Then inferential studies, whenever we take out certain inferences by the help of a statistical tool or different methods, we say it is an inferential study. Exploratory, descriptive and causal design. Exploratory study. Exploratory study is one of the most important study in research methodology because sometimes we have to find something new. And when we have to find certain new things, we are going to apply exploratory study. The only platform by which you can explore or innovate something new is exploratory study. Descriptive study. Descriptive study doesn't used to give any prior information of analysis and prior information of any statistical tool. Descriptive study generally deals with the describing of an element, describing of a topic. Here, the generalization of everything is given. The topic is being generalized and the researcher or investigator used to describe each and every point descriptively. Then, causal designs. Causal designs are usually done on whenever we used to have a comparative study. Means the impact of one on the other. Cause and effect. So, these three is also very important. Then is experimental and exposed fact. Sometimes we have to expose that why the things have been happened, why the things has been taken place. We don't know. So here we have to conduct the exposure fact that is known as experimental study, historical method and case and clinical studies. Historical method, case studies and clinical studies. Case studies is also being done for a limited period of time. For example, if you have to see that why a specific company has downfall or whether a specific company is in the profit, you have to go with the case study of that specific company. Then clinical studies was also being done in a closed environment where we used to take a specific sample and we used to conduct the study on that specific sample. Sample survey, field studies, experiment in the field settings and laboratory settings. It is also a type of scientific study where we used to just take a sample, fixed sample, and we used to investigate by the help of field study, experiments, and laboratory experiments by which we used to find that whether, why a specific phenomena is being occurring in the environment. So if we used to take all these activity in a proper manner, we say that it is a sample survey and laboratory experiments. Then exploratory, descriptive and experimental study means here you used to see that here also we are going to explore the things but describing a thing and experimental the things by a specific manner. Then exploratory, descriptive and causal means here also we are exploring the thing, describing the things and you are going to see that what are the factors by which the things are happening, what are the causes by which the things are going to happen. Then experimental, cost experimental designs. We are used to see that what are the experimental designs and what are the other various other factors which is also working over there for the outcome of a certain phenomena. True experimental, cost experimental and non-experimental designs means here you are going to say that it is a true experimental means all the factors are limited whether the temperature, whether the atmospheric pressure, everything should be same. If you are going to make water, H2O, so you require a certain ratio of hydrogen, you require a certain ratio of oxygen, mixing in the specific temperature, climate, atmosphere, pressure, all the things you are required. So there is a true experimental, cross experimental, non experimental design, which is also being conducted for the result design. Then experimental, pre-experimental, cross experimental designs and survey research. Here, the experimental design is being backed by a survey, means our investigator used to collect the data, used to conduct a survey, and after conducting that survey, he used to go to the experiment lab and conduct the specific study. Now, the classification of research design. 
how you are going to classify a research design. You are going to classify a research design on the degree of formulation of the problem. That what is the problem you have find? Why you have conducted that specific study? What has made you to conduct that study? How you are going to conduct the study? If you are going to get the answer of all these questions, why, what and how, you are going to say that this is the way we are going to classify our study. Then the topical scope, breadth and depth of the study means what is the scope of your study? You are conducting a study on a specific topic, how this study is going to help the society? What are the people, who are the people who are going to be benefited by this research? And the depth of the study means that in-depth knowledge you required and how this study is going to welfare the society as a whole. The research environment means the environment in which you are conducting your study. Environment is very important. You see that there are different institutions, different universities. In some universities, it is a very good exposure for research and development. So, if you are going to get a very good atmosphere of research and development, automatically your research is going to produce a good result. So, here field setting and laboratory setting, the conditions of laboratory, the field setting, the field trips you are conducting, how much, how frequently you are going to conduct a field study, all these things are very important for the research. The time dimension, the dimensions for time, means one time or longitudinal. You are going for collecting of data for a single time or rigorously you are going there and you are collecting data, you are changing the data, you are seeing that, you are updating your data, you are taking all the things which are relevant over the data, means climatic factor, seasonal factor, all are you are going to take for the research methodology. So the time dimension is very important. What is the time frame of your study and according to that you are going to conduct your study. The mode of data collection means whether it will be observational or whether it will be survey means the mode of conducting of your data. Your research design is all about data collection. It is a structure, I have said. It is a backbone of any research. So here, the mode of data collection, whether you are going to collect a data, if you are going working on a primary data, you have to collect data by the help of interview, schedule, or questionnaire. So all these things is being studied over here. The manipulation of the variables under the study, experimental or ex post -port, means the manipulations you are going to do. Manipulations is not being required for any data. A researcher should be very much to follow a true value and must follow all the data and reveal all the data which he is getting. A transparent research is always being a great research. But sometimes to, sometimes to prove our hypothesis, we used to take a data which is not proper. We used to say that no, if we are going to take this data, our hypothesis will be rejected. So for accepting of the hypothesis, we used to manipulate the data, which is very wrong. Research ethics must be followed in all the research work. The nature of the relationship among variables means the variables you are taking for the study and the relationship between that variables for the study. So all these things must be classified in a research design. Now. There are different types of study. The first study is exploratory research design. This research is conducted for a problem that has not been clearly defined. Means here the problem is not being clearly defined. You are going towards a blind end. You are exploring the things. For the first time you are conducting the study. So if you are conducting the study on a first note, you are exploring the things. Exploratory research helps to determine the best research design, data collection methods and selection of subjects means it is the best method because here you are creating a fundamental for other researchers to conduct your study. Then you have got descriptive research. Descriptive research as I have said that it is used to describe characteristics of a population or phenomena being studied means here you are going to describe a phenomena or characteristics of certain topics. If you are able to conduct or describe the certain phenomena of the study, you are conducting a descriptive study. Now it does not answer questions about how, when, why the characteristics occur. It is just here you are describing the things, you are not analyzing the things, you are not concluding or suggesting anything. You are just describing the things and on that descriptions you are taking out certain suggestions. 
your analysis is just a descriptive analysis. So if you are describing the things, it is very difficult for an investigator to get the answer of how, when, and why. Because you haven't have analyzed, you haven't have used any of the statistical methods. And when you haven't have applied any of the statistical methods, it is very difficult to give your opinion about the research. What is your opinion? From where you have got these results? So whenever you are not able to get, whenever you are not able to get the results, automatically these are the limitations of a descriptive research. Observational method. It is also a very important and most adopted method. But the limitation of this method is, is that it is a time-taking method because you have to observe. Here with the observational method, sometimes referred to as a field observation, animal and human behavior is closely observed. Means you are observing the things you are looking at the things. So it takes time, sometimes month, sometimes year. So when you are going to observe the things and taking the data, it is a time taking process. So here it is one of the best method, but a time consuming method. There are two main categories of the observational method, naturalistic observation and laboratory observations. Two methods, when you go to the nature, you go to the open field, you go to the garden, and you see observe certain things. You go to the field, you see the certain things. And the laboratory means you are doing the same thing in a fixed and a closed atmosphere. So both these things are important. Sometimes we have to see that whether the specific environment, specific condition, conditions has an impact on certain factors. So we go to with laboratory. And if we see that what the environment is playing on a specific component, we go with the nature. So there is different aspect. In laboratory, it is a closed study. In nature, you have got an open study. Then case study method. Case study research involves an in-depth study of an individual or group of individuals. Means here, in case study, we used to study about an individual or a group of individual that whether we are studying about a specific person or a group of person. Whenever we have to conduct a behavioral study, whenever we have to conduct a study based on certain profit and loss or an environment, we used to go with the case study method. Case studies often lead to a testable hypothesis and allow us to study real phenomena. Here, what we used to do is this, that we take a hypothesis and we used to see that whether that hypothesis is accepted or rejected. Here, we got a phenomena on which we can say that this thing has occurred because of these factors. So for proving that factors, that these things are occurred due to that factors, we are going to take the case study methods. Now, case studies should not be used to determine cause and effect. Here, one thing must be remembered that for analyzing the cause or effect relationship, we are not going to apply the case study. Means the correlation statistical tool cannot be applied in case study method because it is a statistical method which is always being conducted for cause and effect. So if you are conducting a case study method, correlation statistical tool is not meant for you. And they have limited use for making accurate predictions. So whenever you are going to say that cause and effect, what has caused and what has affected. In case study method, we use to make hypothesis, we test the hypothesis. We can apply a chi-square test. We can say that this is a factor which has helped things, but we cannot say that these are things which has a cause and effect relationship. Now the survey method. In survey method, researcher, participants answer questions administered through interviews or questionnaires. Here, an investigator or researcher used to go to the market, go to the area of the study and take the data on the basis of interviews, on the basis of questionnaire. Here he used to do a survey that why this phenomena is being occurring. After participants answer the question, researchers describe the responses given. 
In order for the survey to be both reliable and valid, it is important that the questions are constructed properly. Questions should be written so that so that they are clearly and easy to be comprehend. Means here, in a survey method, the most important thing which a researcher or investigator required is a questionnaire. Whether he is going for schedule or whether he is going for a written questionnaire, the questionnaire must be properly designed. It must be simple. It must have got different dimensions. It must have been open-ended and closed-ended questions. It must have a balanced question. It must be, the question must be systematically framed. So all these things must be considered by an investigator or a researcher for proper analysis. If your questions are properly structured, automatically your analysis will be easy, right? So on the basis of that questionnaire, you are getting certain data and you are going to analyze or interpret the data by the help of the statistical tools. So survey method is also very important for the study. Then factors affecting research design. What are the factors which is being affecting the research design? Availability of scientific information. Scientific information is very important for any research, whether you are conducting a scientific study or a social science research. We, as a student of management and commerce, as a researcher of management and commerce, statistical tools are very important because we are going to prove each and every dimension of our research by the help of the statistical tools. If you are going to conduct any of the finance research, derivatives, share market, human resource, you have to get the data. And you have to prove that these data or these fundamentals are being proved by the help of that statistical tools. Availability of sufficient data, that is also very important. You cannot say that by conducting a research on 10 or 15 hot papers and you are saying that this has been applicable to the whole universe. It is wrong. So here, what you have to see that you must have a sufficient data. If you are conducting a large sample, you have to conduct a study on the basis of large sample and you have to apply the statistical tools of the large sample as a whole. Time availability, it is also very important. A researcher, an investigator has to divide his time in a proper manner, in a phased manner, so that he has got an efficient time, he, she has got an efficient time for analysis, for conclusion, for suggestion. If he has got enough time, his suggestions and conclusions are on the parameters of his analysis. Proper exposure to the data source from where you are going to get the data, whether it is a primary data or secondary data. If it is a secondary data, what are the sources you are applying? What are the base on which you have taken that secondary source only? Why don't you have taken another secondary source? So all these things are very important for data analysis. So here it must be that the data source must be proper. If you are going with questionnaire, you must have conducted a pilot survey. If you have conducted a prior pilot survey, your analysis will be proper. Then availability of the money. Every research requires certain money because without money you cannot do anything. So finance is very important. If you are making a questionnaire, you have to take it up, take the print, you have to submit, you have to submit a report. So what type of amount of money you require? The more amount of money you have, the more better study you can do. The area of the study can be enhanced by the help of money. Then manpower availability. How many of you knows that your research is not only of you? There are different respondents who are responding, who are helping you in your research work. All the questionnaires is being filled by different respondents. So these are the helpful resources. So manpower availability, manpower planning is also important. If you are going to a winter chill trip for collection of data, you must require a person over there who knows the geographically scatteredness of Vindyachal and guide you that from where you are going to get the data. If you are going to the area of south, so you require a people, who require a person who knows the geographical condition of south and help you to get the better data. 
than magnitude and of the management problem. If you are taking a problem, you say that this is a problem which we have faced. So what type of magnitude? How much the problem is? What is the outcome? What is the impact of that problem to the society, to the organization, to the industry? The more the magnitude, the more important your research will be. Means the more the magnitude, the more important is the time frame. The more the magnitude, the faster you have to submit your research and the faster conclusion you have to get. COVID is one such example. When our COVID, when the COVID came, we have to get a medicine which is being quicker, faster. Right? So, the next one is, the last one is degree of top management support. As a student of research, you must require the support of your guide, the directors, the professors, the head of department, the dean, the company on which you are doing the research, the top boss. So, the top management is very important for conducting a conducive research. If you want a good research, the help of superior is very important because they are the guiding force for our research. Ability, knowledge, skills, technical understanding and technical background of the researcher. Now, the ability, knowledge and skills are the inbuilt characteristics of any investigator or any researcher because it can be enhanced by an individual. If an individual has a practice of studying or reading more books, automatically his knowledge level, his skill level, his ability level will be enhanced. So, it is an individual factor. But technical understanding and technical background of the researcher is very important. Why? Because now the researcher is being, research is being conducted on the basis of different statistical tools. You require computers, you require artificial intelligence. So these things are very important for the modern research. So more technically sound an investigator or researcher is, the better outcome he is going to get for his research. Controllable variables. Controllable variables means you are going to control. What are the factors you can control? In research, you have got controllable variables and controllable variables means both variables are there. What are the variables in which you have your own control? Right? For example, sample size. If you are taking a sample size, you can arrange your sample size, you can define your sample size and you can go with the sample size. But you cannot change the environment, you cannot change the weather, you cannot change the biasness or behavior of a person. These are uncontrollable factors. Right? So here internal variables and external, sorry, internal variables and external variables is also important. Internal variables means all the variables which is being required and which is being asked by a respondent which are very important for an organization and somewhere or the other is being hidden by an organization. By external variables or the variables which is being published in a secondary source. Right? So, let's move and understand that what is the relationship among exploratory, descriptive and causal research. I hope that you have understood that what is an exploratory study, what is a descriptive study, and what is a causal research, right? So here, the explanation is given on the three factors, that is objective, characteristics, and method. So when we take the objective, the exploratory study discovers the idea. Here, you are going to discover an idea. While in descriptive, it describes the market characteristics, while in causal determines cause and effect. Right? Here you can use any of the statistical tools, but here you cannot use correlation. Statistics. In exploratory study, a researcher has a flexible, versatile, front-end research. Means an investigator is getting an open hand for conducting an exploratory study. When it is a descriptive study, prior formulation of hypothesis means you are going to frame a hypothesis before conducting a research means before analyzing, before collecting of data, you have to frame a hypothesis. 
it is a planned and structured design means all the descriptive study has a planned and structured method by which you are going to conduct your study then in causal it is a manipulative independent variable control of other variables as i have told you here there are multiple variables and for a cause and effect impact analyzing the cause and effect impact a researcher or an investigator used to manipulate with the data methods exploratory research is always being conducted on the secondary data why because if you are going to heading towards something blind end you cannot take questionnaire or you cannot take interview or schedule over there you have to go but by the help of secondary data secondary data means by the geographical conditions by the maps by the different things you can explore over there right so exploratory study method is secondary data in descriptive you have got surveys surveys are very helpful for a descriptive study and for causal you have got experiments because here you are going to test that what is a cause and effect relationship between the two or more than two factors right now difference between exploratory and conclusive research now what is the difference between exploratory and conclusive research so here research purpose for exploratory research it is general means to generate insight about a situation for exploratory research we are going to generate the insight of a situation that's all and for conclusive research it is specific it is not general to verify insight and aid in selecting of course of action why you have done this the course of action must be properly selected data needs its wage it is clear means here you cannot i have said that in exploratory study you are going to be dependent on the secondary data so you are you are not open to any of the primary data but in the conclusive study it is clear that what type of data you are having data source not defined here it is well defined data collection from it is open ended and rough means whatever data you are going to collect whatever data you are going to get you are taking that data the sources are not important because you are exploring certain things for exploration everyone who are collecting who are giving you feedback is very important for your research but in conclusive research you are usually taking the structured data then sample relatively small subjectively selected to maximize generation of insight means when you are exploring the things the sample size is very small because less research has been conducted on that area people know knows less about that area while in conclusive research is relatively large objectively selected permanently generalized of findings means here the sample size is large more and more people know about that and on the basis of that information you are going to analyze your data then data collection it is flexible in exploratory research not set procedure flexible from wherever you are finding you are thinking that this data is important you are taking that data when you find that this data is not important you are leaving that data while in conclusive it is rigid well laid out procedure again it is the structured method how you are going to collect the data data analysis here it is informal typical non quantitative means here when you are exploring the things you are basically going with the qualitative factors qualitative aspects rather than quantitative aspects while in conclusive research formal typically it is a quantitative research because here more of more data has been published previously and you are going to conduct your study on the primary data which is also a quantitative data then last one inferences recommendation more tentative than final here in an exploratory study you are going to conclude you are going to suggest in a tentative manner yes i have gone through this and this is the findings but in conclusive study more final than tentative you are going to suggest the specific points you are concluding the remark on a specific note that this has happened and this is going to happen if these factors are occurring right so these are very important for any research design so today we have seen that in a research design it is very important to know about what type of research design you are taking for your research because this is very important and this is primary for any researcher or investigator to know his research design because it is a skeleton and a base on which our research is 
डिपेंड्स आई होप यू हैव अंडरस्टूड एक्सप्लोर द थिंग्स थैंक यू